The C-Class is Mercedes' most successful product. Around 10 million models have been sold since it was introduced. Now the car maker has created a station wagon variant, the C-Class T model. The new design first went public at the Mercedes plant in Bremen, rather than being launched at an international automobile show or in a major urban center. Mercedes head of development Thomas Weber says the city is the center of C-Class design and the sedan was also launched there. It's where activities are coordinated for the company's four production facilities in Bremen, South Africa, Tuscaloosa in the US and Beijing. The T model, however, will initially only be produced here in Bremen. Cutting-edge technology is used to piece together the chassis and body. And optimized painting techniques are one major reason why the energy necessary to produce each individual car has fallen by over 30% here. We asked the journalists on hand for the launch about their first impressions. This one says he's already a fan because it's elegant, has great lines, and is extremely practical. I think it's looking great. Uh, it's a really nice station wagon. Uh, I quite like it. The Kofferraum. Jens Stratmann says the cargo area is only a little bigger, but he still likes cars like this, that he can pick up a load at the hardware store and still have space for four. That's what makes a station wagon, he says, its utility, and this one also looks fantastic. Just like with the sedan, there's a sporty version of the T model with a three-pointed star integrated into the grille, though customers can also choose the more classic look. Journalist Jan Gleitzmann says the interior is great. It's less stuffy and cluttered, with fewer buttons. He likes that. The interior of the new station wagon is typical of the luxury sector. The general ambience is set by high-end materials and workmanship. The Mercedes engineers have also focused on functionality. Thomas Weber says the already spacious cargo area has gotten even bigger, important for families with kids. It's also easy to adjust, since the three seat backs in the rear can be individually lowered at the press of a button, depending on if you just need room for skis or for something larger. You can also open the trunk hands-free. There's this open sesame feature, which means you can load in your luggage without having to set it on the ground, he says. By employing more lightweight materials, the car maker has managed to drop 50 kilograms of weight from the chassis and body alone. Together with the line's highly efficient engines, that means the new model consumes up to 20% less fuel than other C-Class variants. The clear winner in terms of fuel efficiency is the C300 Bluetech diesel hybrid. It burns just 3.8 liters per 100 kilometers on the road. Thomas Weber says the C-Class occupies a special niche at Mercedes. It's the top-selling model in terms of units, which is why the company does so much to retain that position. And Mercedes is hoping for huge continued growth with the line, he says. A planned plug-in hybrid version of the popular model could certainly help the car maker based in Stuttgart to achieve that goal. The Golf Plus Our car tester Matas Kurat says the Golf Plus has an image as an old people's car. But VW is trying to change that with its successor, the Golf Sports Van. It looks small down there, he says, but it actually isn't. Time to check it out. The car makes a good impression from the very first touch on the gas pedal. Its young dynamic appearance is backed up by dynamic handling. The Golf Sport Van's many optional assistance systems also distance it from its predecessor. They include autonomous cruise control with emergency braking and a blind spot assistant that also serves as a parking assistant. One sweet extra is a panorama glass roof that costs just over 1,200 euros. It's a car for all ages. Mata says the chassis is excellent in the typical Golf style. The new model is also responsive, while shifting is quick with no catches. He gives it good grades all around. 
Our test driver is taking out the top line model loaded with extras, called the High Line. Its 110 kilowatt TSI motor consumes 5.6 liters of fuel for every 100 kilometers on the road. From a dead stop, it can hit 100 kilometers an hour in just 8.8 .8 seconds, which makes it fairly sporty. The High Line costs over 27,500 euros in Germany, a pretty hefty investment, but if you buy one, you'll certainly be traveling in comfort. Its higher center of gravity is barely noticeable, but the fact that the seats let you perch a little farther from the ground is a positive development. Mata says that the sports van is designed to provide good field of vision, and if you look to the right and to the left, and out the back, they got it right. Part of that is due to the new Golf's large windows, which also give it a more elegant look. To increase the amount of glass on display even more, the rear view mirrors are now mounted on the door. The sports van's fierce and angular front end appears to be scowling from under thunderous brows. It's a look sure to appeal to younger buyers. Sporting a rear roof spoiler, the car also looks attractive from the back. After his test drive in the new Golf, Matas is ready to check out some of its other features, like its trunk. He thought it was larger than it is, but hold on, you can adjust it for size. VW's engineers looked at all of the legroom available to passengers in the back and thought they should make it adjustable. The whole thing could slide forward 18 centimeters, says Matis, though that means less legroom. But depending on who is in back, if anyone, that might not matter. And the extra space can certainly come in handy in the trunk. At its smallest, the sports van's trunk has 500 liters of space, but adjusting the rear seat adds another 90. And if you lower the rear backrests, that increases to over 1,500 liters of space. The new Golf's interior also has something of a van-like character, although that doesn't mean it looks or feels cheap. The materials used in its construction are high-end, and the model offers plenty of creature comforts. Our expert says the Golf Sports Van doesn't just have more amenities and better safety features than the Golf Plus. He also personally likes the much more dynamic design and sporty suspension, and he's sure younger buyers will like them too. Of course, strictly speaking, the Golf Sports Van is neither a sports car nor a van. But who are we to quibble about a car as pleasing as this one? After all, what's in a name? It's how a car performs on the street that counts. Golf Plus owners will feel comfortable with the switch. The VW might also attract some new customers. The bare-bones version of the new Volkswagen costs just over 19,500 euros in Germany, making it affordable even for young families. Skoda is expanding its line of natural gas-powered vehicles. The Octavia sedan and Octavia station wagon have followed the Citigo G-Tech and getting compressed natural gas-powered engines. Both of the newcomers are equipped with a 1.4 hybrid TSI turbo engine that produce 81 kilowatts of power and can be run on either gasoline or natural gas. When they're running on CNG, both models emit only 97 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometer. With both fuel tanks, the Octavias have a range of 1,330 kilometers. Audi is introducing a spruced-up version of the Sporty S7. Daytime running lights and tail lights to match the front decorate the new model, while the infotainment and assist systems have been updated. The adaptive cruise control has also been expanded to include a stop-and-go function. The engine, a 4-liter TFSI, cranks out 331 kilowatts with cylinder-on-demand technology to optimize fuel consumption. In Germany, a no-extras S7 sells for 82,300 euros. This is the latest model from BMW, the sportiest member of the 4 Series, the new M4 Coupe. 
Equipped with a 317 kilowatt M twin power turbo inline six, plenty of weight saving features and precision motorsport engineering, this Bavarian packs a lot of power and control in a sleek package. BMW's Albert Biermann says the BMW M4 Coupe builds on the success story of the first BMW M3 Coupes. And that's a daunting task because the M3 was always the segment leader. The M4 Coupe has slimmed down. It's 80 kilograms lighter and now sports plenty of intelligent weight-saving technology, such as a carbon fiber drive shaft, a lightweight hatch door, and a carbon roof. The M twin power turbo engine has been newly developed for the M4. It fuses an exciting driving experience with the benefits of modern turbo technology. That means it can go fast without burning too much fuel. The MW project engineer Florian Steiger says the new M4 raises the bar. It offers unbelievable grip potential that translates into a very dynamic vehicle. It can accelerate to 100 kilometers per hour in just 4.1 seconds, has extremely short braking distances, and, like here on the racetrack, it can deal with extreme cornering speeds. The sports coupe has a whopping maximum 550 newton meters of torque, nearly 40% more than its predecessor, the M3. Fuel consumption and emissions have been reduced by 25%. The M4 coupe is rated at 8.3 liters of gasoline for every 100 kilometers and emits 194 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometer. It can sprint to 100 so quickly thanks to its dual clutch transmission. Florian says most importantly, drivers can feel they're pushing things to the limit ahead of time. This means they can react quickly and the car does exactly what they expect. A car shouldn't surprise the driver, but do exactly what a driver needs at that moment. The M4 is a car that allows you to drive very, very fast. The interior is carried over from the 4 Series, but there are various M details to set it apart. The M Sport leather steering with its double spokes give firm control. The optional 7-speed M double clutch transmission with drive logic coupled with the high revving turbocharged engine provide unadulterated racing pleasure. From the outside, the M4 Coupe is not coy about its performance. Three large air intakes on the front spoiler make no secret of the enormous volume of air used to cool the M engine. Air curtains and redesigned M louvers add an aerodynamic touch. The rear hatch, which has also been redesigned, has an integrated spoiler and is formed from carbon fiber reinforced plastic to keep weight low. The carbon roof also contributes to the weight loss. The M also features twin dual exhaust pipes. BMW's head of engineering Albert Biermann says we offer the BMW M4 Coupe worldwide. Our major markets are the US, China, Britain, Germany and Japan. The M4 Coupe pushes the boundaries of the laws of physics with a driving style that unites car and driver. The BMW M4 Coupe starts at 72,500 euros in Germany, while the seven-speed M transmission adds 3,900 euros to the sticker. It buys a whole lot of driving fun. There's a touch of elegance in the air. It's a journey back to a time when motoring was still adventurous and exciting. There are sensational cars at one of the world's oldest car shows, Italy's Concorso d'Eleganza.
Our automotive expert Reinhold Deisenhofer says once a year people come together here at the Villa d'Esta on Lake Como to admire exceptional vehicles. The oldest is from 1908. There are also racing cars. The youngest is from 1972. But there are also modern vehicles and even concept cars to marvel at. The Concorso d'Eleganza was first held in 1929. A jury decides who will be invited to exhibit their vintage cars, such as this Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost built in 1908. Back then, it was considered one of the most technically advanced cars in the world. Reinhold says a great thing about classic car events is that you can learn a lot about how automotive companies developed. Behind him is a beautiful Lancia convertible from 1936. Unfortunately, Lancia no longer offers so many models. This Roadster is a Lancia Astura Type 233. A total of 51 historic cars are being shown off here. The owners hope to take home a trophy. Prizes are awarded in 15 categories at the Concorso d'Eleganza. Reinhold says besides the vintage cars, there's also a brand new vehicle, the Rolls-Royce Phantom Drophead Coupe Water Speed Collection. It's certainly the longest vehicle title ever at the Villa d'Esta. Rolls-Royce builds exceptional and highly exclusive vehicles, but the special series are even more exclusive. They only build 30 to 35 of each. This luxury convertible's trademark front grille, crowned with the spirit of ecstasy figure, blends into lines that are bold and muscular. And the Phantom's rear is anything but restrained. Well, the challenge was for us to uh, have a water speed collection car that really evoked the, uh, the fantastic story of Bluebird and Sir Malcolm Campbell who in the 1930s with the Kraft K3 and K4 broke water speed records right here in Italy, not far from Lake Como where we are today, on Lake Maggiore. He achieved speeds of 129 miles an hour, 130 miles an hour, and uh, we wanted to very much inspire ourselves as, a designer from that, as designers from that fantastic story. Inside, it's reminiscent of the legendary racing boats of Sir Malcolm Campbell. We have a fantastic handcrafted story yeah. for our water speed collection. You can see the polished uh, stainless steel bonnet that we have at the front. For the first time, we've carried that metal piece onto the rear of the car on the rear decking. We've actually transferred that from normally leather into metal. It takes 70 man hours to hand beat that panel and 10 extra hours to polish it, just in the same way that we've achieved the front. And this creates a lovely metallic fuselage through the design. And in honor of Campbell, the new Rolls comes in a very special color. Everybody who, who knows their record-breaking history, and uh, especially in the UK, that Bluebird was always a, uh, a tradition. It, 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 it summarises daring and um, British uh, heritage and British daring do. And this blue, which is a Megori blue, which is Rolls-Royce's own blue again, just captures the, the, the whole essence of the story. Reinhold says the Villa d'Esta isn't just about winning prizes for the finest, most luxurious and most unusual vehicles of the past and present. It's also about cars of the future. And here we can see what's in the pipeline. The past and future come together at the Concorso d'Eleganza. Mini is presenting its Superleggera vision concept. It's a roadster that represents a collaboration with the Italian design studio Turing Superleggera. Mini's design chief Adrian Van Hoydonk says this design begins with a roadster, which is actually a very typical purely British vehicle concept. And then the whole thing is given Italian design flair. The result is what we see here. 
And it's one study that works, something likely to quicken the pulses of many fans everywhere. But the winners are the focus of the event, of course. And then it's time for a victory lap with the cup. Reinhold says it's a home win for the Italians at the Villa d'Esta. The 1931 Alfa Romeo has won the Gold Cup. It's a wonderful thing at an event like this to come face to face with classic cars that you can usually only see on the internet or in books. And that makes it so much more enjoyable. 